Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to become an X1 validator as of April, 2025. Now, why do you wanna become an X1 validator? All in all, Jack Levin himself has said that in the early days, there's gonna be very few validators on X1. And so to incentivize more participation, uh, there's going to be some sort of incentive or bonus for those that do become X1 validators. And of course, as more and more validators come alive, that means less rewards. But in the early days, it's gonna be very lucrative. And to kind of put things in comparison, right now there's about 300 uh, validators on X1 versus something like Pulse Chain. I think it's 10,000 or more. Uh, Ethereum, again, a lot, tens of thousands of validators. So when you compare tens of thousands of validators with 300 validators, and on top of that, by being early on a new layer one like X1 and becoming a validator with a, an incentive and a bonus, it's going to be a lot more lucrative. So that all in all is why you want to become an X1 validator. Now, the next question is, do you need to be technical? Uh, short answer is there are tools out there that make it super easy to become one. Now, there is a slight learning curve, but all in all, if you are somebody who's not technical, who just needs somebody to hold their hand throughout the process, uh, whether it's my content or other people's content out there, there's a lot of good information to make it accessible. So all in all, if you are somebody who shies away from anything tech, I still recommend giving it a go. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Real quick though, shout out to Blackbeard for making an awesome tool to make it super easy, which is what we're gonna use today. Um, and then, of course, down in the description below, uh, there's many links uh, for additional resources, where to get your server. Uh, so inter-server is what we're going to use. And then also, if you're more of a uh, written type of person, you can go ahead and read the Google Doc if you want to follow the instructions. All right. So with that out of the way, let's first and foremost get our server. So once you're on the inter-server site, we're going to need a dedicated server. So we're going to hover over servers gonna to go to dedicated home and then we're gonna scroll down where it says customizable servers and we're gonna find the 7950 now if you happen to see a 7900 on here that works too it's slightly less expensive unfortunately it looks like they're out of them and so we don't we can't go a tier down we can only go a tier up and that's uh, this is the next best one it's actually better than the 7900 so you'll choose this you'll choose configure now we're gonna scroll down. By the way, feel free to pause this video. I'm just gonna go right through this, but if you get stuck, just rewind it. Uh, we're gonna choose 128 gigabytes of memory. We're gonna choose two times two terabytes of NVMe, so four total. And we're gonna remove the SSD one here. And then we're gonna scroll down. We're gonna choose Ubuntu operating system right here. Keep going. And that's about it. So this is your configuration. When you click on continue, it's probably gonna ask for your server host name. Doesn't really matter. Uh, let's say it doesn't matter, right? You can call it whatever you want. You can change your root password to anything you want. You'll have to remember your root password because once it's set up, we're gonna need that and you'll see in a second. Uh, it does take roughly 24 to 72 hours, right? So a day to three days to get this thing set up. Uh, so you have to have a little bit of patience because they have to manually create and customize your dedicated server, and that takes a little time. So now fast forward, it's been a couple of days. We finally get our server set up. So now that's what I'm going to be showing you next. All right, so now we're going to need an application called Terminal. So Terminal makes it very easy for you to communicate with your, commu uh, with your computer uh, using commands. Now, we're not going to be working on our computer. We're gonna need to tap into the server that we just got. We had to remote log in. So we need terminal to do that. So as you can see, we have terminal up. I'm gonna type in SSH space, and then the IP address that you should have uh, when you got the welcome email. So 205-209-117-238. Uh, and actually it looks like I already forgot something. So let's do SSH root at. So this is what it should look like in the end. SSH root at and then the IP address. 
you're going to hit enter. It's gonna ask for that root password. You can just copy paste it. Now, I already copied it, so when I paste it, you can't see it right now, uh, nor can I. That's perfectly normal. You're not supposed to be able to see it due to security reasons. And then you're gonna hit enter. And voila, we are now logged in to root, and you can you know that by it showing root at server two, or whatever the, um, the server name is that you created. But we are now logged into the server we had created, which is awesome. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go have some fun and use X1 console by Blackbeard to get it set up. And I'm not gonna, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna necessarily read word for word here. I'm just gonna give you a highlight of what we're doing. So first and foremost, we're gonna create a new user. So all we're gonna do is click on this. We're gonna go over, add that, add a new password. You can choose whatever you want. It's gonna ask you to put it in again. Then you don't have to fill out the full name, just hit enter here. Keep hitting enter. Capital Y for yes, this is correct. Perfect, so now we're gonna continue down and we're gonna give our new user some admin rights. So just copy paste. A lot of this guys is just gonna be copy pasting. Now we're gonna log in as a new user so let's go ahead and go there. Now you can see that we are logged in as the new user because it shows username at server two uh, instead of root. So that's how you know that we're logged into the correct one. All right, now we're going to install the console. So we're gonna first choose this one, put it here, and then we're gonna choose the second one and put it in here just like this. Now, this might take a second to get up and running. You can tell, um, yeah, there you go. So now we are logged in very quick. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to, and I don't think we need the instructions anymore. I'm gonna change this. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, this is the main dashboard for X1 console. This is, uh, if you see this, you're in the right spot. We are going to choose number 10 for other. And then we're gonna choose number one for install, install, start X1 and ping or, or reset. So we're gonna choose one. Do you have an existing X1 validator wallet? No, we do not. This is our first time, so type NO. Pseudo password for username. That was the password you uh, had created when you created the new username, uh, what we just did a few seconds ago. And we're gonna let this run. Do you wanna continue? Capital Y for yes. I always say when in doubt, choose either yes or continue or just enter whatever it says. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now I will occasionally pause the video as time goes on because sometimes this takes longer than usual. Um, so again, do you wanna continue? Capital Y for yes. Awesome. Do you wanna continue? Capital Y for yes. So far guys, all we've done is just copy paste a few lines of commands and then everything else is working for us. And usually this takes a second to get set up. All right, so now let's see, proceed with operation. So it looks like it's working for us. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it and we'll let you know when something new comes. All right, so now it says proceed. Sometimes I like to just double check to make sure I didn't miss anything because occasionally there's something easily that can be missed. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit enter. It says proceed with standard. I don't have to do anything, just press enter. Voila. Now that took about five minutes or so uh, up to this point. This is due to me, which is pretty cool. Which network would you like to connect to? Mainnet versus testnet. That tells you guys we are super close to mainnet. So I'm gonna choose testnet. I wish it was number one, but we're gonna choose number two for testnet. And press enter to continue after you have funded wallets. So this is important, guys. We are going to need to use what we call a faucet. Don't worry if you don't know what that means, but all in all, we're gonna to have to fund one of our wallets first. So before proceeding, you need to manually fund your ID wallet. So when we created this, uh, when using X1 console, it created a few wallets for us. And then actually they're right above here. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and copy paste these just so I have them. So copy that, I would recommend opening up notes, just leave it here for now. Uh, there should be one here, I'll have to go look, but it's called the ID one. I think it's in the console here, give me one second. And again, guys, you know this, but never share your seed phrase or private keys or anything like that. This is just for demo purposes. So this is, it, it looks like it automatically gave us the wallet here. So we're gonna go to the faucet. Uh, give me one second to see if this link right here, we're gonna copy this and this will bring us to the faucet. And again, what a faucet is on testnet, it allows you to quickly get testnet tokens uh, fairly quickly. So this is, and now we're gonna put in that address that it also gave us. So it says it right above it. So we're just gonna copy this, make sure it's all highlighted correctly. And then we're gonna click on, I'm not a robot. I swear I always fail these, but hopefully, I don't really see too many cars to be honest, but let's see if we can get through this. All right, one second. Car, 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 car. Verify, okay, now we're gonna click on get five. It's loading, please wait. Hopefully it gives us some confirmation here in a second. All right, airdrop of five XNT successfully sent. So now we're gonna go back here and press enter to continue after you have funded the wallets, which we just did, specifically the ID wallet. Enter and let it do its thing. So again, guys, this process, I'm pausing the, the recording just to save time, but this can last anywhere from you know five to 10 minutes. As you can see, it says starting the validator now. I expect it's gonna take another five to 10 minutes. Uh, so just be patient with it. Don't try to rush it. Um, I'll let you know if anything else pops up. Another quick interesting point, you'll notice this says allowing time for snapshot download to complete. Right now, we're ultimately, our validator's up, but it needs time to catch up with everything, right? To catch up with the existing blockchain. And so that's what it's doing now. If we experience any problems, usually it has to do with this snapshot not working correctly, which has nothing to do with us. Um, so what we're gonna do after we get through this process, um, we're gonna give it a few minutes, and then what we'll do is I'll show you how to actually, assuming it doesn't work, but we're just gonna delete the ledger and then try again restarting it. Um, but let's give it some time. All right, guys, so I actually left my computer, came back a while later, and so let's see what happens. So I'm just gonna click on press any to continue. All right, so we are back at the home screen. Now, if this is your first installation, then give me one second. If this is your first installation, please copy the following command and run it. So we're going to copy this. And then we're going to go back to return to main menu, number nine, 11 for exit. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to type CD to go back, and we're gonna just paste this export file, just like that. Not sure exactly what it does, but we needed it. Then we're gonna type in X CD space X1 console, and then the and symbol twice, and then period backslash X1 console dot SH, just like this, and it should pop up. Guys, as you can see, congratulations. We have our validator up and running, as you can see, with active. Um, I would recommend when you do this, I literally went out for probably 15 minutes, came back, uh, and it was working. So a lot of times what can happen is you think it's not giving you a correct snapshot, and so you'll have to um, troubleshoot in that case. But we gave it plenty of time. Uh, that's it guys. There is plenty of content. Uh, check out all my other videos. You know, what is uh, autopilot, how to get that set up. You know, what are ways to set the commissions, all that. Uh, check it out. All right, guys. I'll hope you have a great rest of your day. Again, if you are interested in this type of content, make sure you subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And hopefully X1 mainnet soon. Take care.